Well, we've made it halfway through the week so far, and hope that your week is going well. And to encourage us uh, this week, with it being Wednesday, um, the spotlight that I want to put on today is not really on one particular uh, biblical character, um, as we often look at a specific man or woman, uh, look at their example, whether good or bad. Um, but today, really, more broadly, at all those who have gone before us, who are good examples of faithfulness to God, we've been, on Wednesday nights uh, here in Zephyr Hills, we've been studying from the book of Hebrews, and the book of Hebrews, the writer was really trying to encourage and admonish um, the brethren, the Christians he was writing to, to to remain faithful, to not give up on Christ, uh, to not give in to the uh, trials and temptations and pressures they were facing. And it is in chapter 11. If you remember Hebrews chapter 11, then the Hebrew writer gives uh, many familiar examples of those who are faithful to God, like um, he talks about Abel, and there's Enoch, uh, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah. There's Moses. Um, there's the descendants of Abraham. There's, oh, he talks about Rahab, and he talks about the walls of Jericho coming down, and the people of Israel passing through the Red Sea, and he talks about many more uh, there in Hebrews chapter 11. You know, verse 32, when he basically says, you know, there's not enough time to talk about so many more like Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and so many who did great things. And then even mentions in verses 35 through 38, those who are not mentioned by name, but who endured great sufferings and trials for the Lord. But then he comes then after he gives all of those examples. And really says, you know, there's not enough time, there's not enough paper, uh, there's not enough ink to tell of all the, the examples of those who were faithful to God. That they, they had great faith in God, unwavering faith, unconditional faith. Uh, they didn't give up when it was hard. Um, they kept serving God even when it was hard and even when they were uncertain what was going to happen. Even when things worked out good, even when they turned out bad, all of these great examples of faithfulness to God, enduring, lasting faith in God and faithfulness to God. And it comes then in Hebrews chapter 12, and this is what I wanted to focus on today, because then he says to them, and a reminder to us, he says, therefore we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he calls them. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us, let us today lay aside every weight of this world. Let us lay aside and cast off every sin that so easily ensnares us or clings so tightly. And let us then run with endurance the race that is set before us. Of course, you could sort of talk about the imagery that the Hebrew writer is probably referring to there. And, you know, it's almost like, uh, of course, then, and, you know, they would have understood in the, the culture, the society that, you know, the Romans had their Colosseums and all that and, you know, great places of, you know, competition and so on and so forth. And it would have been a familiar thing for there to be these, uh, you know, great competitions and races and so forth. And a great, you know, stadium where many people are sitting up in the stands and cheering on and watching what's going to happen. That seems to be the imagery that the Hebrew writer is using as if it's like if we were in a, in, uh, a stadium and all of these who have gone before us, all of these great men and women of faith who have already run their race, they've already won their prize, they've, they remain faithful unto death, 
And now they're sitting up in the stands cheering us on. They're, they're, they're waiting to see what we're going to do. And so the Hebrew writer uses that and says to, to use that imagery and to think about so many, how many have gone before us. Even like these he mentions about Abraham and Moses and Noah and Abel and David and, and all these others and, and Rahab and, and all kinds of men and women that have gone before us who have kept faith in God. They are a great cloud of witnesses. They've been there. They've done it. They lived it. They were faithful to God until death. And now it's our turn, he's saying. So we need to follow their example. We need to lay aside every weight and every sin that clings so closely. And we need to run with endurance like they did. It's like, not to, to use some more imagery, it's like they're at the finish line, Right? You know, if they're talking about a race, running this race that is set before us, and they're they're waiting at the finish line, waiting for us to get there, encouraging us on, trying to motivate us. They've led the way. They've showed us how to do it. And now it's up to us to run this race so that we can be there with them. And every time I think of this passage, too, I'm... Uh, and I can't help but think about, you know, these are biblical examples, sure, and, and we have those. But I'm sure we all can also think and need to think about those who have, who we have known, of our family, our friends, who were faithful to God, our brethren, who have gone before us. They have become part of that cloud of witnesses. I'm you know, reminded of this, uh, you know, just recently, uh, some of our members lost a son, and he is a great example of faith and love, faithfulness to God, and I just can't help think that he has joined this great cloud of witnesses to encourage us all on to remain faithful. To God, and I think of others. Um, the last several years, we've, you know, I've known of we've we've lost, you know, brethren here in in Zephyr Hills, or, you know, family. We I, I've also known and heard of of many others through recent years that have have passed faithful men and women. And I just can't help but when I think of this passage, I think. They've joined that great cloud of witnesses, and they're encouraging me. They're encouraging us all. They're they're waiting to see what we're going to do. They've done it. They've run their race. They finished the course. They fought the fight. They received their prize. What am I going to do? What is Kevin going to do? What I need to do. What we all need to do, what this great cloud of witnesses of faithful men and women are telling us and encouraging us to do is, as the Hebrew writer says, get rid of the sin in in your life. Let go of that stuff. Put it behind you. Get rid of the cares and pleasures and uh, the deceitfulness of riches, the, the things of this world that that weigh us down, that distract us from what life is really about and run the race of this life that God has given us. Run with endurance. Run with endurance. And of course, verse 2, he says, the greatest example of all. I mean, all these examples are great. They're wonderful. There's something special about knowing about Family, friends, brethren, loved ones who are, you know, waiting for us on the other side, who are encouraging us. But but above all, the greatest example, the greatest one who is cheering us on, the greatest one who is waiting for us at the finish line is Jesus. And when he does, the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 12, verse 2, we need to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus, our Savior. 
our Lord, the Son of God, our Creator. He is waiting for us. Jesus came to this earth. He took on flesh. He lived this life. He ran this race. And he finished it. He was faithful to God above all. He was raised from the dead. And Jesus is now in heaven, watching and waiting for us. Encouraging us, helping us. Telling us, lay aside every weight and sin which ensnares us and run with endurance. We have such a great cloud of witnesses of our Savior, Jesus, of so many men and women who are faithful to God, that are encouraging us, that are waiting for us, that are a testimony of what it is and what it takes to be faithful to God unto death. And all of us need to learn from their examples, follow their examples until we cross that finish line and we can all walk into heaven together. I hope this is encouraging. I hope it's a reminder to all of us. Let's continue to, to get rid of the things of this world, to not let anything distract us from our purpose, our race. Let's run with endurance. Let's be faithful to God. Let's help one another. Let's help one another as we run this race together and be encouraged by those who have gone before us. God bless.